actually another week of September that hasn't happened yet, but school is starting up and it's getting more intense in the next couple of weeks, so your girl ain't gonna read anything, so we're filming this now. And then if I do read something, we'll just put it in October and pretend that we read it then. <laughs> and today I'm here with my September wrap-up for 2017. I read a total of 14 books this month. But I'm splitting it into two parts because I don't want this video to be like 20 minutes, so I'm only going to talk about seven books in this video, and then I'll talk about seven more books in part two. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read for the month of September, I really did not like. There's a rant review of it if you're interested, but it is deadly cool by Gemma Halliday and this book was just this was just a hardcore nope for me so if you want to see me rant about it then definitely check out the review because it is I get pretty heated but yeah I gave it one out of five stars if you couldn't have guessed not a good book I just hit myself the next book that I read was Monster Republic by Ben Horton and I gave this a 1.5 out of five stars honestly my reading month was not very good like there was not a lot of very high ratings except for like two or three books so that's what you get when you uh choose to read books that have been on your shelf for over two years this book follows cameron riley who used to be your typical 14 year old boy until he attends a school field trip where a giant nuclear explosion occurs with the hopes of creating a new army a mad scientist named dr fry takes cameron and stitches him back together and that's when he escapes the laboratory and decides that he is going to join the Monster Republic, which is a group of Dr. Fry's reject soldiers. So the book concept sounds like it could be interesting, right? It wasn't. I feel like there was no plot. Nothing really happened in the book. It was just kind of boring. I wanted a lot of action. There wasn't really any action. I didn't really connect to any of the characters. I honestly didn't give a shit what happened to them in the end. So, needless to say, I'm not going to pick up the second book, and um, this is going to be in the next unhaul video. The next book was one of the books that I absolutely love this month, so there were some good books, but it is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I have a full review of it if you're interested, but I loved it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So, you should all read this book if you haven't already, but like realistically you have, because everybody and their mother has read this book except for me. I still need to get the rest of the series, like, ASAP. The next book that I read is called Writing Out the Storm by Claudia Jones, and I gave this a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Emily Clark, who has always loved swimming, and then one day in her PE class, she jumps into the swimming pool and she gets this deep fear of the water and she ends up starting to drown until her teacher pulls her out. Now she's getting nightmares every night and her parents begin to worry about her so they suggest that she goes to a therapist in order to try to figure out what is going on with her. So the therapist suggests that she try hypnosis. So when she goes under she actually realizes that she's having flashbacks from a boy named Michael who drowned in 1981. I really did not like this book. I found the entire thing to be boring and bland. All the characters annoyed me. The dialogue all seemed super forced and unnatural and I just I really didn't like it. It's probably gonna be in the unhaul video as well. Yeah it was not a good reading month as I said. A lot of one or two star books. The next book that I read I was actually pleasantly surprised by. I did not think that I would like it as much as I did but it was actually really funny and the topic you would not think that it would be a funny book but it was actually really good. But it is triggered by Suzanne Vaught and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 on Goodreads. It's about a boy named Jersey Hatch who ends up trying to commit suicide by shooting himself in the head. Now, several months later, half his body is left useless and he also can't control some of the things that come out of his mouth. He also doesn't remember a lot of things prior to his attempted suicide, which one of the things is why he tried to commit suicide in the first place. Now, this is basically the story of him trying to figure out why he shot himself and what was going on in his life and trying to cope with that. I honestly, as I said, did not think I would enjoy this as much as I did. I was really intrigued by it because it is a mental health book. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you know your girl loves herself some mental health books. So I definitely was excited to pick it up and I was very happy that I did. I really liked how we got to see glimpses into 
everybody else's lives and how Jersey's attempt at suicide affected everybody else in his life. There was a great balance between funny moments and very serious moments in the book, so I really enjoyed that. It wasn't such a dark book. It also had its very funny moments as well. The next book I was actually pleasantly surprised by as well. It was another one that I was kind of iffy on picking up, but it was a mystery thriller. So I was like, mm probably hopefully going to enjoy it so let's just just dive in. It is Red Julia by J.A. Whiting and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars on Goodreads. The book follows Olivia Miller who lives with her Aunt Aggie after the death of both of her parents when she was one years old. One night Aunt Aggie is out bike riding and she ends up dying from a massive heart attack which Olivia doesn't think is possible because Aunt Aggie is one of the healthiest people that she knows. So one night when Olivia is returning home, she comes across a car accident where the victim is visibly distraught. So Olivia leaves her car in order to try and help the man who appears to be saying Red Julie over and over again. When details of the man's death come into light, Olivia realizes that the man was murdered and he may have a strange connection to her Aunt Aggie. So as I said, I actually was very surprised by this book. I definitely did not think of that. I would like it as much as I did. Right from the very beginning, the plot draws you in. You want to know what happens to Mr. Anderson and Aggie and how the two of them are connected. Although I was able to figure out who the murderer was based off of like little clues that were dropped in the book, I didn't think that it was all that obvious. Which is usually one of my biggest pet peeves when I can figure out who is doing what in the story. I also really liked every single character in this book, which doesn't happen often for me. I think Olivia was super stubborn and she didn't take shit from anybody, which I absolutely loved. It was also really nice because Olivia's 21, I'm 21, so it was kind of cool to see a character my own age, going to college and all that stuff. It was very relatable other than the whole like murder thing. Still, I liked it, I liked it a lot. I also really liked how witty she was. The dialogue between her and Joe and her and Brad were really great. Brad is like the love interest. He's super cute. I love him. Joe is Aggie's love interest but he's like this little old man and he's just adorable and he's just like a precious little cinnamon roll. I also really liked how the romance wasn't like a giant aspect of the plot line. It was just kind of mentioned here and there which was nice because sometimes you need a break from that romance you know. You just need a break and you need a killing which is what I got. Overall it was a super fun read very fast. I read it in a day and it's a good thriller if you're looking for something quick and easy that doesn't make you think too hard. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap up is Bay Girl and this is by Heather Smith and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I wasn't really expecting much from it, it was just kind of a fast read that has been on my shelf for a very long time so I figured we would get through it this month. The book follows Kit Ryan whose father is a drunk so when he loses his job the entire family gets up and moves to St. John to live with her uncle Iggy. Kit obviously does not want to leave her friends and her school and start at a new school in the middle of the year. That's when she meets a boy named Elliot and her very depressing life seems to be taken a turn for the better. So the book wasn't really anything special, it wasn't like a standout book to me, but it wasn't enjoyable and I really liked how it was set in Canada because a lot of books are not set in Canada so it was nice to see some representation of the Canadian people you know although I did find the book to be very slow at times it dragged on and on. It was funny at times. I think that Mr. Adams was the best part of the story. He was definitely my favorite and honestly I just wanted the whole book to be about Mr. Adams. He was hilarious and like I did like Kit as a main character but Mr. Adams was definitely the highlight for me. Overall like it was an okay book. It was like a coming of age kind of thing. Kit standing up to her father blah 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 but nothing special. Alright guys, so those were the first seven books that I read this month. Stay tuned for part two. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or what you thought of them. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!